Today we're going to cover something we never covered before. New concept in Judaism, I'm not sure that we, we mentioned it a couple of times, but we never really covered it. So let's start. Source number one, this is Vayedaber Hashem el Moshe Behar Sinai Lemor. God spoke to the Jewish people on Mount Sinai. Thank you, to Moshe and Mount Sinai. And he said, Daber el Bnei Israel, he said to him, speak to the Jewish people, ve'amarta elehem, and you should tell to them, ki tavo el ha'aretz asher ani noten lachem, when you're going to come to the land that I give you, ve'shavta ha'aretz shabbat lachem, and then the land is going to rest, for God, the seventh year, the land rests. We learned this thing before. Shesh anim tizra sadecha, six years you should sow. Veshesh anim tizmor karmecha, six years you should collect grapes. Veasafta et vurta, you can collect all the produce. Uba shena shviit, on the seventh year, Shabbat Shabbaton niye laaretz. It will be a complete rest for the land. Shabbat Lashem, it was rest to God. Sadcha lo tizra, your field you should not seed. Vecharmecha lo tizmo. And your crops, your grapes, you should not receive. You know, we look at it today, we say, ah, what's the big deal? You know? Uh, people, look, for example, people today go, every professor get the seventh year, you know, from the university, you get Shabbat Shabbaton. But it's one professor. It's one professor. The university doesn't clo close on the seventh year. Imagine the business, the the, oh, imagine, what are you going to eat? Whole the whole the nation world. stops. So nothing, world. nothing. It's the whole nation stops working. Imagine a whole nation for a whole year, nothing done, no, no, nothing done. Gotcha. Yeah. Nothing done. The drive yeah. is down. The table. So, in order to understand this, a couple of things we need to make understood over here. First of all, it's a little bit funny, we never even mentioned it. When does it start? When does the mitzvah start? The Shemitah? The shemitah? Yeah. No, no, when does it start over here? When does God tell Moshe? Oh, yeah, but he told him about Sarah, but when is, it going to, when is it going to start? Only in, in other words, in 40 years from now. In other words, this mitzvah start in 40 years. So until then, you can't perform the mitzvah? So you, that, that's what you say. Until then, you cannot perform the mitzvah. So I don't understand. The whole idea of Judaism, part of the mitzvah, part of the 613 mitzvahs, is going into the land and perform this mitzvah. So in other words, it tells you, you're not really Jews yet. Wait until you go into the Israel, then you can be able to perform commandments. Right now, you're not in Israel, you cannot perform the commandments. The question is, what does it make us? Here, right now, we're not in Israel. We cannot perform the commandments, and even the Jews that are in Israel cannot perform the commandments. It's a question right now if the Shemitah is right now in Israel, it's, in Reba, it's from the rabbis, it's from the Torah maybe, what is the Shemitah? Yeah, but for sure you need all the Jews in the land of Israel to, be, to, make, to do it properly, no matter what you're going to get. Until all the Jews come to the land of Israel, even now, you don't have proper Shemitah rules. So we need to understand, something is funny over here. So let's continue. Let's discuss What's the mitzvah. The question, why, why given? No, we're going to see we're going to see the question right now. Chakirazo matzinu benogel la mitzvah tefillin. The status of how we can do the commandments we find when it comes to the commandment of tefillin. Why? Ha'im be yotam bamidbar. This is the question. Try to answer. When the Jews were in the desert. Kodem shnat arba'im, before the 40th year, did the Jews kiimu b'nei Israel mitzvah tefillin? Did the Jewish people do the commandment of tefillin? So the entire 40 years in the desert, did they do mitzvah tefillin or they didn't do mitzvah tefillin? I don't think they did. 
They didn't do. Why? They didn't have the tefillin. They didn't have. Uh, what do you mean they didn't have the tefillin? Make. You have cheap. You have zero. You can make. What do you mean? Just like today, you make. You got a commandment. Make. Maybe it takes six months, eight months to make, but make. So, but you have forty years. Did they do the commandment or not? So let's look. Sheba in the mitzvah tefillin, we have four parshiot. We have four portions from the Torah in the mitzvah tefillin. Lo raka parshiot kadesh ve'ayaki yaviecha. Two of the parshiot is kadesh and hayaki yaviecha. Ela gam parshiot shma ve'hayayim shamoa. There's two other parshiot. Shma and hayayim shamoa. And when did we get these two parshiot? of Shema and Ayayim Shamoah, we got it on the day Moses passed away. It's, a, it's, in, it, it's in the book of Dvarim. Moses told us these two parashiot when he passed away, which means that was right 40 years into the future. Right before they go right to the land. So in other words, now what are you going to say? They the did put... The so, so maybe you can say they put on Tfilin, but they only put two parashiot inside. They didn't have all parashiot in front. Oh. So they only put two. They only had the two from the Midbar, but they didn't have the two from the, from the Varim. So maybe that's what they did? They put on filling only half? That's hard to even imagine such a thing. But they did receive the, the commandment. What's going on over here? How did they put on filling? Did they put on filling? When? How does it even work? So let's continue. So Yeshumrim, there are those who say, Sheba Midbar lo inichut filling. There's an opinion that there was no tefillin in the desert at all. There was no commandment of tefillin. In other words, when did the commandments start taking place? Again, once they land into the desert. Before Israel, everything, there's no commandments. That's how it looks like. That's what they say. Yeah, question, conquer, not conquer. So we'll discuss some other time. The conquer and not conquer is for the, for the land. Maybe the other commandments were immediate. Yeah, that's a... But, but that's the idea, yeah? So it says, that's what some people are trying to say, but it says it's very hard to say that they didn't put on tefillin for 40 years in the desert. And it says, the Rebbe says, that I can prove from the Torah itself, not from the Torah directly, from the Midrash, that they actually did put tefillin on the desert. And then we're going to have a problem. If they did put on tefillin in the desert, what did they write in them? But it looks like the Midrash holds that they did put on filling in the, de in the desert. How does the Midrash know? So let's, con let's continue. Aval nishmat mehem ma'amar ha-midrash be'eliyahu rabah. It says, those people who say we didn't put on filling, they forgot that there's a Midrash. They didn't, they forgot the, the idea of the Midrash in Eliyahu Rabba. Shuva be'rabotenu ba'alei ha-toistas v'parachat shlach. That is brought by taste face in the portion of Shlach. What does it say over there? Over there it asks a question. We know there was a case of a person who gathered wood on Shabbat and they didn't know what to do with him, so they put him in jail until God, until God told Moshe that he has to be killed. You know? So it says, why does this portion of Mekoshesh? of the guy who gathered the wood is immediately directly after the mitzvah of tzitzit. What's the connection between them? Yeah, what did they put in one after another? It says, From here it says, I can prove that also in the desert they put on tefillin. So you ask, what's, what's the connection? So it's like this. I learned something about this. About huh? tzitzit. Moshe Rabbeinu ask Hashem the tzitzit, so it's not going to be the remind the mitzvah, so it's oh, not going to be a guy like the Mikoshe. Oh, exactly. Very good. So let's see. Yeah, let's see. Exactly. So it says like this. Vayu b'nei Yisrael b'midbar, and the Jewish people were in the desert. Vayimtsa'u ish mekoshe shetzim b'yom ha-shabbat. They found a person who's gathering wood on Shabbos day. Amar HaKadosh Bukhu LeMoshe, God says to Moshe, Mipnei Machi Lezet HaShabbat, it says, why is this Jew already one Shabbat, he's already desecrating the Shabbat, what's happening over here? Amar Moshe Lefanav, so Moshe explained in front of God, God, I can explain to you. 
זה לא פרובלם. אמר משה לפניו, ריבונו של עולם איני יודע. So, משה told him, I don't know, wait. אמר לו הקדוש ברוך הוא, so God told him, ah, you don't know but I do know. It's opposite, yeah. You don't know but I do know. אני אומר לך, so God told him, I'm going to explain to you what happened. כי בכל ששת ימי חול, I'll tell you why. Because every day of the week this guy was putting on tefillin. יש לו לישראל תפילין בראשו ובזרועו. Every day he has a reminder to remind him that there's a God up there in heaven. The תפילין reminds him every day that I exist. וראו אותם וחוזר במעשיו, he sees this תפילין and he says I better behave. There's a reminder. אבל עכשיו ביום השבת אין לו תפילין בראשו ובזרועו, but on שבת he doesn't have תפילין. What's going to remind him? How is it going to remind him? לכן חילל את השבת, therefore he desegraded שבת. So let's give him ציצית, so he won't. That's the idea. But what do we learn from here? That they did תפילין. That's what we learn. Yeah. So באותו שעה אמר לו הקדוש ברוך הוא למשה, in that time God told to משה, משה צרה ובור להם מצווה אחת שיהיו נוגעים בה בשבתות ובמי טובים. It says, God told to משה, go and choose for them one commandment that they should do on Shabbos and Yom Tov. זה מצווה ציציס. And this is what the mitzvah of Tzitzis was chosen. שנאמר, דבר אל בני ישראל, עשו להם ציצית על כנפי בגניהם לדורותם, וראיתם אותו, זכרתם את כל מצוות השם. So when you see the Tzitzis, you're going to remember all my commandments. It's a remembrance. Okay. But now, we have a problem now. So what do you want to tell me? You want to tell me they put on tefillin. So, okay, I accepted you. They put on tefillin. But what? They left too empty? There's no such thing. It is impossible. You are not allowed to do anything with Kedusha and not have full. You cannot do it. For me, make a Kiddush and wine. How does it have to be? A full cup. On Hanukkah, how does the, how does the candle have to be? Full candle. You cannot li- leave a, a mitzvah half full. And for sure, Tefillin with two parshiyos, maybe you can say they had two parshiyos, it's on a mitzvah. It has to have four parshiyos. It, says, it has to have the same feeling. It yeah, says, well, so feeling. what did they put on? So if, even if you have feeling, the question is, how is it possible they put on feeling? Yeah, so how is it possible? Shvai Yisrael is, in, 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 is going to be in Dvarim. It's not yet. How, how are you going to do it? So, Chidushe HaRashba Lemenachot, in Chidushe HaRashba for Menachot, Huva Shekivan Shekadosh Baruch Hu, שקדש והיה כי יביאך נאמרו בשעת יציאת מצרים. It says that the two parshiot were told them when they left Egypt. That's an easy one. They could have wrote it down already. By the time, very quickly, they could have made it. וכתוב בהם, but it says, what is it written in those two parshiot? והיו לאות על ידיך, או לתותפות בין עיניך, there should be a sign between your eyes, should be a sign on your hand. מובן שהזהיר אז הקדוש ברוך הוא על התפילין. So he says, obviously God had to tell them all the rules of tefillin. Yeah? It's true that the parshios came later on in Devarim. But he, ought, he had to tell them all the rules already then. Mm-hmm. It says, and you have to make all the details of the tefillin God already had told them. Otherwise the people will come to Moshe and he says, how are we going to make the tefillin? Moshe will tell them, it's black, it's this, it's this. He has to tell them the rules. So obviously, even Why though, yeah, even though it was not written down yet, the, those parashiot, but those specific parashiot exactly, those words, God told him, you're going to write these words over there and put them there. That's what he says. If therefore you had to say, שכל ארבע פרשיות נאמרו אז בשעת יציאת מצרים. You're going to say that all the parashiot was given to them at the time they left Egypt and not in the Varim. אלא ששמע ויה עם שמוע נכתבו לאחרי זה משנה תורה. They were written a second time. They were, we recorded it afterwards. But they were given before. The recording of it comes after. But again, it says, yes, you have to say that. Otherwise, the whole thing doesn't make sense. Okay. So we solved the problem of tefillin in the desert. They had to put tefillin in the desert. But we're going to see that's not the only problem. There's going to be many other problems in the desert that we think we solved the problem, and it's all, we didn't. Let's see how. So let's look at source number four. It says, לכאורה, מכיוון שקביעת הימים טובים של פסח ושבועות, when we establish the holidays of Pesach, holidays of Shavuot that's coming up, 
קשורה עם השינויים בתקופת השנה ביחס לצמיחת התבואה. It has to be with the season of the year. פסח has to be with the particular time of the year. שבועות has to be in the particular time of the year. כמפורש בתורה, just like it says in the Torah. שלוש רגלים תחוג לי בשנה. It says three holidays you should celebrate. את חג המצות תשמור. The holiday of מצות you're going to guard. למועד חודש האביב. You always will put it on the spring. שהתבואה, why is it called חודש האביב? It's a month. שהתבואה מתמלאת בו באיביה. It's the month when the produce becomes thick. You can have, it's a time for harvest. To, it becomes thick inside. Become ripe. Let's call it this way. The wheat. שהתבואה מתחילה להתמלא בפרי שלה. It's the beginning when the תבואה starts to fill up its container. וחג הקציר ביקורי מעשיך אשר תזרע בשדה, and the holiday of harvest, זמן הבאת ביקורים. This is a time. To bring the first fruit. וחג האסיף בצאת השנה, בהסבכה את מעשיך, and סוכות, which is חג האסיף, when you collect all the produce back into home. שכל ימות החמה והתבואה מתייבשות בשדה, that the entire time they are going to be in the field, ובחג אוספים אותה אל הבית לפני הגשמים. And in the holiday of סוכות, you gather all the produce and you put it into your house. היינו, so what comes from these things? שימים אלו, that all these days, הם מועדים על התבואה ועל כל צמחי הארץ. They are time for produce and all these commandments that have to do with vegetation. ונתחייבו בהם להודות להשם, the commandment is to thank God, המפרנס את עבדיו ואזן את העולם כולו. God is giving sustenance to the entire world. Aha. So let's try to think. יש מקום לומר, so we might have to say, שבהיותם במדבר, that they, when these people were in the desert, קודם שנכנסו לארץ ועסקו בעבודת האדמה, before they entered the land, before they become, became farmers, לא היה עדיין ימים טובים אלה. Because this, all this יום טוב have to do with what? Wow. With the produce of the land. It's a creation. When is Pesach? When it starts, it says Pesach is when your grain starts to get thickened. When is um, um, Shavuot? Shavuot is when it's already ripe, when you harvest. When is uh, Sukkot? Sukkot is when you bring the produce from the field. They didn't do this, they didn't do that, they didn't do nothing. So therefore, there's no celebration, not of Pesach, not of Shavuot, and not of Sukkot, because it has to be of produce. How did they celebrate the holidays in, all, in the desert? All this celebration has to be celebrated according to the season of the year. So, yeah, but, but it, it says, how, how would you know when it's Pesach, when it becomes thick? And they didn't know. How do when you harvest? How did they do Bechorot? How did they do Shem Shem? How did they gather? When you gather from the field, they never gather. They, they, they don't gather. Exactly. It's 78 degrees every day, all day long. <laughs> it's a, there's no holidays, it doesn't change, there's no season. Yeah, there's no seasons, there's nothing. You, and even if they wanted to bring Bikurim, how do you bring Bikurim? How do, how do, what, are you gonna, what did they do in the desert? So it's something we never even thought about. Al kol panim, chelkam v'al kol panim, so yes, so, so we can say, Maybe you can say you can bring the Pesach sacrifice, but you can't sell it. You cannot bring the korban, um, the, the katsil, the, the korban of the wheat, the sacrifice of the wheat. How did you bring? Where did you get wheat from? And it has to be wheat that you planted this year and it grew this year. You, you, they didn't plant wheat and they don't have wheat. And it can't be a miracle wheat. And it can't be a miracle wheat. That's right. It has to be wheat from the land of Israel, by the way. It cannot be wheat from the desert. Otherwise, it doesn't even count. Yeah. And Bikurim, what did they do? <laughs> That's, and Bikurim, what did they do with Bikurim? Bring Bikurim. All the commandments. What, did, what happened to the commandments? That's the question. The Ikara Shela, he says, and he says, and the main problem with this question comes Ben Nogia Lechada Sukkot. It says Sukkot itself is going to be extra problematic. Why? In Yanashen Mitzvah Tasukkah, it says, why do we celebrate Sukkot? To remind you what? Yashavnu Baskot. But they're sitting in the sukkah for how long? For the 40 years they're sitting in the sukkah. How would you know it's sukkot? It's the same thing. They're celebrating one week as a remembrance of what? 
Of, it's the same thing. That's what they do every day. So there's no, the holiday of Sukkot doesn't make sense at all. Be, they couldn't celebrate Sukkot. The entire year, that's right. So, but it needs to be celebrated as a remembrance to something. Over here, there's no remembrance to anything. We, we have to remember what is Sukkot. It tells us the holiday of Sukkot. So you're going to remember that I put you in Sukkot when you left Egypt. What is the Sukkot I put you in? Ananea kavod, the clouds of glory. You had clouds of glory that protected you every day. That, that symbolizes the Sukkah. So now we have the Sukkah that symbolizes the clouds of glory. Hainu shechelik mikyu mitzvat Sukkah ya kavana sheleman yedu. And now there's no, the, the whole point of Sukkot, you don't have because that's the way they live the entire year. So, okay, so it comes from here. They don't celebrate Pesach. They don't celebrate Shavuot. They don't celebrate Sukkot. Question about feeling that we thought we solved. But it's still, okay, so we solved feeling. Well, what's going on over here? So, something doesn't make sense in the whole concept. I thought they were Jews. They were uh, religious people. What's happening? These religious people don't, don't celebrate anything. Let's continue. So therefore, in the 39 years that you Israel in Midbar, all the 39 years that the Jews were in the desert, inside the clouds of glory, what are you going to tell me? That for seven days from Tetvav of Tishrei until Chafal of Tishrei, Yashvu Bazukot Zerich Leishiva Bnei Kavod, Ba Beshaa Shemeshach Kol Hashana Kulam Yashvim Metoch Tadnei Kavod Atzmam. They sitting in the entire year. You want to say they celebrated sitting in the? It doesn't make sense. You don't need the remembrance. That's the way you live every day. Didn't forget it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's nothing to remember. That's, that's the way they eat. That's the way they deserve. It's like, let's celebrate the manna. What do you mean? I'm eating manna now. How can you celebrate the manna? When you have it in all the strength, and besides of that, you're going to be, if you're going to say, maybe they built a sukkah like us as a remembrance. That's what some people are going to try to study. Some commentaries are going to try to say, so they built a sukkah with schach, like us, as a remembrance. So it says it doesn't work according to halacha. Why? Lo hayu yecholim la'asot sukkah betoch ananei akavod. Because even if you would have put a sukkah inside the cloud, you, you're not allowed to put a sukkah inside the sukkah. Yeah? That's a, it's they a rule. They have a they sukkah. Have a the second sukkah doesn't do nothing. The sukkah that they built mean, means nothing because they have a sukkah inside a sukkah. Mishum shavai sukkah betoch sukkah because they have a sukkah inside a sukkah. Vedoch akachi gedol omar. So some commentaries are going to tell you still out. You know what they did on uh, Zeu? Or, uh, you know what they did during Sukkot? They went out of the Adanea Kavot and they built the sukkah over there. Because... It says that that's uh, very hard to, to say. We would have heard something, would have told us something like this. To say such a thing, that's unbelievable. So this is what the Rebbe says. It is, some people are trying to say this, but it says this is very hard to say. These people went out of the clouds of glory. And they made the Sukkot that we said. That, 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 that doesn't make sense at all. No yeah, there's no way. Okay. Another problem that we're going to see that happened to be in the desert that we never discussed before. I mean, we mentioned all these things, but we never really explained what's going on over here. What else do we know? Source number five on page eight. It says, Vezot ha mitzvah ve'achukim ve'amishpatim. Look how it says it. This is the commandments, the laws, the statutes. Asher tziva Hashem elokechem, that God commanded you, lelamed etchem, to teach you, la'asot ba'aretz, to do in the land. Again, very strange. It looks like all the commandments have to do with what? All the, the command has to do with the land. In other words, if you're not in the land, it looks yeah. like you cannot do the commandments. If you're not in Israel, it's a, it looks like you can't do the commandments. What's going on over here? 
בארץ אשר הותירי שם לרשתה. He is explaining to them all the commandments I'm giving you. I'm giving you to do where? In the land, because over here, I don't know. It doesn't, over here we don't do commandments. It doesn't look like they're doing What do you mean they don't do commandments? They can do all the commandments. What's, in other words, what's the difference between them and us? Exactly the same thing. We live outside the land of Israel. What do you mean? We are just like them. You don't need the man, but the clothes. No, no, no. no. I'm yeah, talking yeah. about with commandments. Yeah, you don't with commandments. The, ah, of so we should, says, what do you mean? Our commandments are not worth anything? Let's continue. So it says... נאמר בתורה, it says in the Torah, והיה כי תבוא אל הארץ, it says when you're going to come to the land, וירשת, and you inherit the land, וישבת בה, and you settled the land, then ולקחת מראשית כל פרי האדמה. Then starts the commandments. Then you can take from the fruit of the land, מגיד, so here we learn, שלא נתחייבו בביקורים, that the commandment of ביקורים wasn't didn't take effect until they conquered the land and they start dividing it. Vahainu, Shitzivui Zene Marom Nam Biotam Bamidbar, they received the commandment of Bikurim and they were in the desert. Aval Kiyumo Yarak Lachet Misal Aretz, but they could only fulfill it after they went into the land. And the Rebbe continues something that's going to blow our mind. Ubemet Ken Hugam Bechola Mitzvot. It says you should know this is true not only in the midst of Bikurim, in all the commandments. Oh, let's see the oh, little. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. In no, none of the commandments they did. He says, What? None of the commandments? The Rebbe says, I'm going to show you. How? You think it's only agricultural? It's not only agricultural. It's all the commandments they didn't keep. They didn't keep any commandments. Huh? What do you mean they didn't keep commandments? אלא גם במצוות שאינן תלויות בארץ. It's also in the commandment that has nothing to do with the land. שעיקר קיומם הוא בכניסה לארץ דווקא. We're going to see that the commandment's main attribute is only when you enter the land. That's when they kick in. כמו שכתוב, just like it's written, וזאת המצווה אשר ציווה השם לוקחם, ללמד אתכם לעשות בארץ. This is the commandment that God taught you to teach you to do where? In the land. So the question is, if, if that's the idea, to do it in the land, why are we putting on feeding here now? Today, over here, in Tucson, Arizona. Why are we keeping Pesach? Why are we keeping all these things? It's in Tucson, in the land. What's going on over here? Klomar, which means, HaTorah Atzmanit Nam Nam Bamidbar. It says the Torah, it's true that the Torah was given in the desert. And there was a specific reason why it was given in the desert. Vedavka Bamidbar. It was specifically, God wanted to give it in the desert. Why he wanted to give it in the desert? To give you a message. What's the message? Oh. Lehorot sh'atorah hi efker lakol. So that everybody has an opportunity to take. Nobody is going to say, I'm not able to partake it. I'm, I'm, I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have this. Everybody is the same. In the desert, any object in the desert belongs to whom? To everybody. So it doesn't belong to you. In the land of Israel, if you, from this tribe, only you can take it. If you're that tribe, only you can take it. In the desert, there's no, nothing that doesn't be, that somebody said, this is mine. What do you mean this is yours? Whoever grabs it, that is, that's what it is in the desert. והיינו שאין זה כמו דבר שבבעלותו של פלוני, והרוצה להשתמש בו צריך לבקש רשות מבעליו. If it would be given in a land, somebody would say, hey, it was given on my land, you need my permission in order to have it. That's why God chose the desert to tell everybody can come and grab. Ela Torah sheyechet lekol bnei Yisrael. The Torah belongs to every Jewish people. A person who's a girl, who's a convert. If the Torah was given in Israel, people can tell him, hey, you have no part in it. You don't have part on the land, you don't have part of the Torah. It was given in the desert, he says, I have part in the Torah just as much as the high priest, just as much as anybody else in the world. It's in the desert, anybody can grab it. בכוחו של כל אחד ואחד לקיים את התורה והמצוות. Each and every one can fulfill the entire Torah and mitzvahs. אבל עיקר קיומה הוא בכניסה לארץ דווקא. So it's true that the Torah was given in a desert for to give us the message that anybody can acquire it. But the Torah says, yeah, I'm giving it in the desert. But you know where you can really do it? You can't do it in the desert. In the desert, all the rules, all the agriculture rules don't apply. 
not only all the agricultural rules, all the holidays don't apply, as we learned just now. Not only all the holidays, we're going to see even furthermore, not only all the holidays. From the two most important commandments to the Jewish people. Mimitzvat Mila Korban Pesach. Even these two. We'll see. From circumcision and bringing the Pesach sacrifice. How do we know this? So let's look at source number six. This is in the book of Yoshua. Ba'et ha'hiyamar Hashem el Yoshua. This is after Moshe passed away. God comes to Yoshua and God says, Ase lecha charavot surim. It makes, makes for you knives, special knives. Veshuv mol et bnei Yisrael shanit. And go circumcise the Jewish people again. It says why? Because for the last 40 years, they were not circumcised. The last time they were circumcised was in Egypt. And for 40 years in the desert, they didn't even perform the mitzvah of circumcision. For 40 years. After, uh, after the first one. After, since they left Egypt. Since they left Egypt, there was no other circumcision. They did once when they left Egypt. But for the 40 years in the desert, there was no circumcision. And let's continue. Vayas lo Yehoshua. Charvot Surim and Yoshua made knives. Vayimol et bnei Israel al givat ha'aralot. So all the new generation, all the generation that was born in the desert, all that generation for 40 years were not circumcised. Yeah? Al givat ha'aralim and they were all circumcised on the hill of the fourth queen. Kimulim ayu kol ha'am hayotzim. Because all the nations that went out of Egypt, they were circumcised. And the entire nation for the 40 years, they didn't circumcise themselves. Crazy again, no, no commandments. What do you mean? You guys are not Jewish? What are you doing? So it would be a kid that is 40 years old? That's right. He's not, He's not circumcised. In the desert. Oh, good question. Tamu. By the way, the, um, one tribe did do it, Levi, Levi, but not the other ones, yeah. Vayehi kasher tamu kol agoi leimol, vayeshvu tachtam amachanat chayotam. It says when they finished all this procedure, they had to rest a little bit. So they had to rest before they entered into the land, to conquer the land. Vayomer Hashem el Yoshua, so after the circumcision, God says to Yoshua, Hayom galoti et cherpat mitzrayi ma'alechem. It says now, you, uh, you guys can be, can be called Jews. Until now, you had the, the impurity of Egypt upon you. You were still impure. And this is where Gilgal was, where the tabernacle was first time. Now Moshe's question. Halachically, what's going on over here, according to Halacha? How come they didn't circumcise? The, psh- the Pashup Shat. How come they didn't circumcise? It says, what do you mean? Matan Torah, they would tell. God told them in Matan Torah to circumcise. Because there's a rule that you're not allowed to... You remember when um, Moshe was traveling with his sons that he didn't circumcise? Why didn't he circumcise his sons? Because on the way, he's not supposed to. So as soon as he was able, he was in an inn, he should have done what? He should have done his circumcision. There, there on the way, so say, what do you mean on the way? The, in some times, throughout the time, they were for 19 years in one place. In, throughout the 40 years, there were times that were for 19 years in one place. Why didn't they circumcise then? Yeah. So, they, uh, so let's see. Shekevan because they needed every day to go in the way. They're not allowed to circumcise because it says, but we just said there were 19 years in one place. What happened over there? It says, who made the decision to stay there for 19 years? Did they? Oh, it says they didn't know. It says there were some times that I said, that's right. It says there's no way for them to know. Since they don't know, says, we have to be ready for removal. We're not allowed to circumcise the kids. 
It doesn't matter. Ca ca just traveling with the kid, even carrying him like this, it's hard on the kid. It's dangerous. You're not allowed to. Yeah, it's hard. It's still hard on the it's hard on the babies. Im imagine now, yeah, you're gonna take a baby, circumcise him, and start uh, going on a plane the same day. A person has an operation, and you put him on the plane on the same day. Same thing. You don't do that. It's not nice, right? It's dangerous even. Yeah. And you just did it. So let's see. Benogea le mitzvat mila when it comes to the commandment of mila circumcision. When they were in the desert, they didn't circumcise their sons. Like it says, The entire nation did not circumcise themselves. Except the tribe of Levi, like we mentioned, they did. Even though they have a good reason, it's dangerous. You can say it's according to Allah even. Me. Did did because the, the lady went, you, you can say the lady did something which was out of the ordinary. Something it was maybe even maybe even wasn't allowed. Maybe it was not allowed to. Yeah. Makom, but nevertheless, the fact, even if you're going to say, the fact that God didn't give them the opportunity to circumcise, God could have told them, hey, we're going to be here for three days. It's fine, you can do it. God didn't do that. Which means what? That the circumcision, that wasn't the time yet. Even according to God. You know when the time for circumcision is? Again, once you when? Once when you go into the land. That's when it starts. Over here, I'm just giving it to you. You know when it starts? Once you go into the land. Gives us the proof that then God didn't care about it so much. It wasn't so important, the commandment. Let's continue. What about, what about the Passover sacrifice? That's another one. Maybe they couldn't do, you know, the Pesach that has to do with the harvesting or with the thing. But they could bring the Pesach sacrifice on the 14th of Nisan. That's for sure they can do. Right? Vayedaber Hashem el Moshe Bar Sinai Bashana Hashani. It says that God said to Moshe in the Sinai Desert in the second year, let's say, Mitzrayim. To, when they left the land of Egypt, everybody, 14th of Nisan, we're learning the Alachas now every morning. In the 14th of Nisan, what do you do? You bring a Pesach sacrifice. What do you mean, what do you do? And you cannot tell me, I don't know the harvest, I do know the harvest. What do you mean? The harvest, you have the sheep right there. So Rashi says, so it says, why does it say in the first month, so it says this whole sentence. Why does it say this whole sentence again? So Rashi explains, Mipnei shehi genotan shel Israel. It says he says it because this is shows on how disgusting the Jewish people are. It says what do you mean? Shekol arba'im shana shayu Israel bamidbar that the entire forty years that the Jewish people were in the desert lo ikrivu ela pesach zo bilvad. There was only one time, except the Pesach sacrifice in the second year. That's it. And since then, throughout, 14th of Nisan comes every year. And what do the Jewish people do? Nothing. They don't celebrate it. Nothing. There's no commandments. There are no commandments. Look what's going on. Exactly. What's going on? It says this is to show you. It's written in such a way to show you. There are thousands, millions, millions of sheep. Millions. No, so. no so. Again, why? It looks like there's no... The commandments don't apply right now. The commandments are going to apply when? When you go into the land. Again, the same story. What's going on over here, yeah? So let's continue. Page 11. Ve'al derech ze benogea la mitzvat korban Pesach. We have the same thing when it comes to the Pesach sacrifice. Shemilvad ha-Pesach she'ekrivu bashena ha-shneti ha-shneti ritzam b'eretz Mitzrayim except the second year that they brought the Pesach sacrifice, that the, why the second year? Because this was the time the second Pesach was brought in. That was the story. Oh. That only because of that, because God wanted to introduce a new commandment, he, he brought it in, and then since then they don't celebrate it. In other words, if God did, wouldn't have told them specifically to do it, they wouldn't even do, done it the second year. 
The only reason they did the second year is because God went out of his way and says, hey, I, I, I know you guys don't do commandments here in the desert, but I want you to do this one. Okay, so they did it. And then they discovered the second Pesach. But without it, it looks like they wouldn't have done it. Again, there's no commandments in the desert. All the years that they were in the desert. Even though the Korban Pesach, you don't need a congregation. An individual can do it at the same time. And they were then allowed to, to do it. They didn't even need to take it to the temple. They could, to the tabernacle. They could have done it in the backyard. They were allowed to. And if they don't want to do it in the backyard, they can take it. The tabernacle is right there. What's the big problem? They could have taken it to the ta tabernacle. Nevertheless, they didn't bring the first sacrifice until they're in the land. Again, craziness. It looks like there's no commandments in the desert. Because the, the commandments kick in when? When you enter the land. Aha. And the Rebbe says, and you know what? Over here, these specific two, circumcision and Pesach, are extra strict. Right? Are extra strict. There are two commandments of the Jewish people. Look at it. You cannot say it's, ah, oh, it's just circumcision. It's just uh, there. This is, part, this, is Jew, this is being Jewish. These two commandments. In these two commandments, circumcision and Pesach sacrifice, it has specific stringencies. It's the only commandments, positive commandments, that you get a karet on, that you get cut off from the Jewish people if you don't do it. You cannot just not do it. What do you mean not do it? Not do it is getting cut off from the Jewish people. Only in them you have the obligation of getting cut off. It means that they get cut off from God. You want to tell me that all the Jewish people were cut off from God for all the 40 years in the desert? It has to be that they were not obligated. Otherwise, the whole story doesn't make sense. Just like it's written in Parashat Temor, It says, and the soul gets cut off if he doesn't perform these two commandments. Like the other Rebbe explains, these two commandments are very important. If you don't carry them, it's the most severe than all the positive commandments. They're not like all the other positive commandments that they are individual things. This is you, like you cut, the other ones doesn't cut you off from God. These two, in one, if you don't perform, cuts you immediately away from God. Nevertheless, we see Also, these commandments, the most important one that the Jewish people have, there was no performance of them until the Jewish people actually entered the land. Let's continue. So just like in the desert, before we entered the land, then we didn't have the main thing wasn't the commandments. You, do, you didn't have the commandments. Says why? Because it doesn't. The commandment is not fully done uh, unless it's unless you are in the land of Israel. That's why it looks like circumcision is not fully done unless you were you are well in the land of Israel. Tfilin is not fully done unless where you are in the land of Israel. All the commandments are not fully done unless you are where? One. Which one? Shabbos. Ah, Shabbos, okay. That's the only one. Yeah, Shabbos has... Apparently, we don't yeah. Yeah. Um, Shabbos, maybe because Shabbos has to do with time. It's something uh, specifically. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Why Shabbos is different, it's interesting to know. I don't know. Good question. We should look it up. Here comes the Rebbe, and he tells him, you think that now it's different than the time of the desert? Or it says, right now we're in exactly the same situation as they were then. That's what the Rebbe says. Kach hu gam benogea lezman agalut, shegalu me'eret Yisrael kayadua, like we know, that when the Jewish people were exiled from the land of Israel, 
This is the Ramban says it. If you want to look at it in the Ramban, the Ramban actually says it. Says it black and white. What does it say? Not ju- not just the third of the mitzvahs. He goes wow. he, he goes no, not just that. Any commandment. Any commandment. Shekiyuma mitzvot bezmanaglu. It says the only reason right now why we're doing commandments. We're not really doing the commandment. We're not really good. We are doing it, um, how do you call it? You know when the pilots are training in the, they have a simulator? We are, we are, right now we are riding a simulator. This is what the Ramban says. We're not doing the commandment. What, you're thinking we're doing the commandment? The Ramban says, when there's no temple, we're not doing the commandments, we're riding a simulator. That's what the Ramban says. Let's continue. Ki im bebchinat siyunim. The Ramban says, you know what we're doing now? We're only doing siyunim. What's siyunim? We're only practicing. We're not doing the real thing. That we're not flying the plane. We're flying the simulator right now. So that's all we They flew the simulator in the desert. And you know, right now, after they, we don't have a temple, you know what we're doing right now? We're also flying a simulator. By the way, not only now, as we're going to see, also during the time of the second temple, it was only a simulator. It wasn't the real thing. The only time the commandments were real was when? During the first temple, as we're going to see soon. It's an amazing concept. Let's continue. Kmoshe Katuv, it says, like it is written, Yirmiya, this is what he wrote, Hatsivi lach tziyunim. Yirmiya says, there's one day you're going to get kicked out of the land, and when you get kicked out of the land, you're going to say, hey, there's no point in commandments anymore because we're out of the land. So he says, don't say that. Make for sure you ride the simulator. Why? Because God is going to come back. You're going to go back into the land and then you're not going to know how to, how to drive. You will not know how to fly. So the reason why we need to practice right now, even though it's just a simulator, it's not the real thing, right? It's going to be when? It's going to be when Mashiach comes. That's how we're going to do the, the right thing. Right now, it's only simulation. So, but we need to know how to fly the simulator. That's what the Ramban says. The, that's what in Yirmiya it says. Yeah? Yirmiya says the same thing. Because you're going to say, what's the use of it? It doesn't work anyway. Just a simulator. It's not the real thing. So he says, I know it's not the real thing. But if you're not going to perform it now, when Mashiach is going to come, and then it will be the real thing, you won't be able to perform it because you don't know how. That's what Yirmiya says. Let's continue. It says the real commandments are going to be when? In the future. Right now it's only practice. It's only simulation. It's like a 12-year-old putting on, you know, um, putting on a talis. It's like, uh, whatever. Rambam says it. Yeah, not just the, the Rambam. Yirmiya says it. Everybody says it. This is, this is what it is. And this is what, by the way, this is what we say also in our davening. It says, in our davening for Musaf, what do we say? And over there we're going to do to you mitzvat In other words, now, now it's not mitzvat retzonecha. Yeah, but now it's not mitzvat retzonecha. Uh, it's not. That's what you say. Over there we'll be able to do what you really want. Right now we're playing games. Really? Let's continue. Let's look in Yirmiya. Uh, Yirmiya, it says like this. Hatsi tziyonim. It says, put to you markings in other going to the simulator. Make yourself a simulator. Semilach tamrurim. So that you know, you know, put like uh, posts, like amudim, you know, tamurim. Over here you stop, signs. Shiti libech lemesila, derech halachti, shuvi betulat Israel, shuvi el areach ela. The road upon which you went, return, my virgin Israel, return to these cities. So it says, what does it mean? Rashi explains, tamurim. This is a Rashi. You cannot say, you know, this is a, a, a Rashi says, Uputo shel mikra. Rashi explains Yirmiya. You know what Yirmiya says? Asi simanim. It says you have to put signposts. In other words, everything we do right now is what? Signpost. Le what? Le dat haderech shalacht ba me'eretz Yisrael le bavel. 
That's right. You go into exile. So why are you so doing you the commandments? So you know oh, to to continue. Because one day you need to return with these signs. These signs are the way you'll be able to return. Tefillin, you'll be able to. Otherwise, when Mashiach comes and you need to put on tefillin, you won't be able to put it on. These are the signs. And you would not know the way back. These are the signs. That's what Rashi explains. Be lost. You'll be lost. Exactly. Unless you continue to do it, you will not know what to do. It says, I know that one day you're going to come back. Yirmiya told me. But if you don't continue to perform those commandments, you would not know what to do. Let's continue. And we're going to find. This is from Nachmonides. Yeah? It says, the Sifri writes, this is what, this, write like this. God says, I know I'm going to take you now from the land of Israel and I'm going to put you in Babylon because I have, uh, you didn't behave the right way. This is your punishment. You're going to Babylon. God is throwing us out. Hey, you So he says, how do we, what's a simple shot? You have to do the commandments in an excellent way. Metsuyanim, do it in an excellent way. But Metsuyan comes from the word Sion, the signpost. Put a signpost, the commandments. That's another way to learn it. Shetachzeru, because one day you're going to come back. Leyehu alechem chadashim. It's true that they're not meaningful now. They're not the real thing. Let's not say not meaningful. They're not the real thing. It's true that they're not the real thing. But nevertheless, without them, you wouldn't know what to do when Mashiach comes. So it says, I don't understand this whole process. What's going on over here? It says, I'll explain to you the process. It says, it, it gives an analogy, a beautiful analogy, about what's going on over here. What's the commandments we're doing now, today? Mashal le'adon she'ka'as alishto. So I'll give you an analogy. There's a person whose his wife misbehaved. He's angry on her. He says, that's it. Get out of her. I'm not interested in you anymore. He's angry. And he tells her, I don't want you to live with me anymore. Go to your father's place. Go back. Go back. You came from your father. He taught you how to behave this way. Go to him. Be with him now. This is what God did. He sent us out of the Israel. He says, go to your father. But he tells her, he tells her you should know that we're not getting divorced. Don't think I'm getting divorced. We're not getting divorced. I'm sending you now. Make over here in the palace, I expect you to wear certain garments, to do certain things. You have to act like a queen. You didn't act like a queen, but you have to act like a queen. In okay. other words, if I'm going to go, to go to your father's and you're not going to act like a queen over there, when I take you back, you wouldn't know how to act like a queen. Continue to act like a queen over there. Practice. practice. That's right. So that when I take you back, you know what to do. Not only practice, you have to be better. I don't know. She was yeah. good. We'll see. Amar lahem, Amar la, hevi It says, that doesn't mean that when you're in your father's place, you don't wear the tiara, you don't wear the, the, the thing. You have to... Over there, I want you to look exactly the same way you, you get up in the morning, you put all the jewels, you put all the garments, the royal garments, over there every day. Otherwise, you're not going to know you're a queen when you come back. This is the commandments. Put, adorn yourself with all the garments. Because otherwise, you'll come back. I'll take you back one day. It's true. But then you're going to tell me, I don't know how to behave like a queen. What do you mean? So don't forget all the commandments. It's true that over there when you're playing in your father's house, you're not being a queen. But one day, you'll be here in your father's house again. Then you'll be a queen. So if you're not going to do it over there, you won't. So she asked you, why do I have to get in my father's house to wear all these things? No, it's, it's fake. No, I'm not saying I'm not being a queen over here. It says, I know you're not being a queen over there. But one day you'll come back over here, you'll be a queen. Same thing as a Jew. A Jew out of the land of Israel is not a Jew. A Jew is only a Jew once he gets back to the land of Israel. Not only the land of Israel. With the temple. With the temple. That's right. 
וכן אמר ירמיה אין אורס עושה דירמיה הציבי לך ציונים it is made for you the jewelry the sign post this is the ציונים ואלו המצוות שישראל מצוינים בהם this is the commandment this is the jewelry that we have to put on every day so that when God is going to put us back in our land we'll know what to do okay וזהו גם תוכן דברי הספרי. And says, this is also the message of the ספרי. בנוגע לקיום המצוות בזמן הגלות. He says, this is why right now it is important to do the commandments. אף על פי שאני מגלה אתכם מן הארץ לחוץ הארץ, even though I am taking you away from here to the out of the land of Israel, היו מצוינים במצוות, continue to perform on the commandments. שכשאתם חוזרים לא יהיו לך חדשים, that when you return they will not be new to you. הציבו לך ציונים אלו המצוות, make for your sign post, these are the commandments. קיום המצוות בשלמות יהיה בזמן הגאולה. real commandments are going to be when, when we're going to have the temple. only when we're going to have the temple and all the Jews are in Israel. then real commandments takes place. כמו שכתוב, like it says, ושם נעשה לפניך כמצוות רצונך. Only over there we're going to do the real commandments, like you really want it. Right now we're just driving the simulator. וכפי שמעריך אדבור מהרעש, this is... I don't think he says it over here. I, I have to say it out. You know, every, every year, nine be'av comes around. What, what, what's the big ever? What's the big, you know, mourning of nine be'av? So millions of people died. Okay, millions of Jews. They would have died anyway. What happened? What happened is we are not able to be Jewish. What happened is, you know what the destruction? It's not what happened to them. It's what's happening to us right now. Right now, what, 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 what happened then is continuing 1900s, 2000 years later. We are not able to do the real thing. We are not able to do the real commandments. All we're doing now is just practicing. It's not like we're just doing two-thirds. Even the one-third that we are doing, it's not the proper doing. It's the same. We are doing it. Not like in the desert where they didn't do it at all. Right? In the desert, they didn't do it at all. At least now we're doing it, but we're in the same status as the guys in the desert. We actually, there's no point in doing it. So called. The only point in doing it because one day we're going to be have to do it the right way. That's why we're doing it. That's exactly what's going on over here. Really, actually, they were sinning a big sin, not like us today, because there is no better Mikdash. But if better Mikdash has existed and you don't go to Israel, you've got a big problem. That's right. That's right. And, that, the, and, that's why, and, the and that's what Mordechai put all the cherems on them and everything, that the whole thing was, if you remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah? and it didn't help. Yeah? They, they wanted to, to, to make it, people, were, the yeah. truth is, I don't know if they were doing a big sin. It was the time, God wanted it that way. God didn't want the temple to be that. Maybe they should have pushed anyway, but that's something else. Yeah, no, but what they learned for me, once you have better Mikdash existed, and you're out of it's, Israel, it's, a, it's, a, it's nothing. It's a much bigger problem. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like, it's the same status as now. It's not much of a difference. The second temple, if not all the Jews are in Israel, yeah, it's, not like, it's almost like now. It's not like in the first temple. In the first temple, the mitzvah was a mitzvah. In the second temple, the mitzvahs were not mitzvahs. It wasn't the same. Okay. וכפי שמעריך אדמו"ר מהרש ביורנים בזה, just like the אדמו"ר מהרש explains, ואף על פי כן, it says, you know what the person is going to say though? So if it's not so important, maybe we shouldn't perform all the commandments because it's not the real thing. So that's why Yirmiya says, ah, 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 you know what will lead to the coming of Mashiach? The more God sees that you adorn yourself and you care about it, the quicker he will return you to it. If he says you don't care about it, 
Ah, you don't care about it. Mashiach is going to come even if you don't care about it. It's true. But the more he sees that you do care about it and you do want to put the jewelry and you do act like the queen, like the, queen the quicker you'll be able to perform the mitzvahs the right way. This is why the Nevi'im wanted Mashiach. Why did the Nevi'im want Mashiach? For the mitzvahs to count. It says, the, it's not like the, you can't do two-thirds of the mitzvahs. No, you can't do any of the mitzvahs. It's not just two-thirds. To do the mitzvah properly, you need the entire Jewish nation. You know what it's like? God forbid, a person wakes up one morning after an accident. Right? God forbid, he has an accident. He lost all his arms, all his legs, all his eyes, all his hearing, everything. All his zeu. It's a t he cannot do any of the commandments. He cannot sow the land. He cannot do it. He says, this is what he do. It's true, you're a Jew. You're a Jew as a Jew as anybody else. And you can move the, you know, with your nose to act like in a computer game, like, you, like you're putting on filling. It says, but this is a computer game. You're putting on filling. This is what happened after the destruction of the temple. A Jew is not able to perform all the commandments the right way. He's missing all these limbs. He's not able to do the right things. So a, a Jew should think, so it's not the real thing. What should I do? So it says... Nevertheless, we learn that we need to perform the commandments at every time, at every place. Even though we can say, maybe look at the Ramban, look at the Sifri, look at the, why are we doing the commandments today? It doesn't count anyway. Why? The Yirmi, I told you why. Because afterwards, when Mashiach is going to come, we know how to perform the commandments the proper way. Even though you would come to the conclusion that when you need to perform a mitzvah in this time, it's not what God meant. When God said to do the commandment, he meant with the temple in the land of Israel, the right way when the Jewish people are, we're not doing it 100% right now. So he says, in many aspects, first of all, because of us. Why we, it's not perfection? Because everybody knows the way we put on tefillin. Why do we, the way we put on tefillin? We're not, yeah, be, between you and me, we put on tefillin because we put on tefillin. Yeah, we, we don't have the feelings that we should have that we're connecting to God when we put on tefillin. Hen mitzrad itzro halotov, because we have evil inclination that we like to eat the steak much more than we like to put on the tefillin. And not only that, there are things that force us today, you know, not to, be, to learn Torah, we have to go to work, we have to do things. There are commandments that only we can do with the building of the temple. Now we can do it at all. So whether is it feeling that we can do, but even if we can do it, you want to tell us this is what God meant? When God says, put on feeling, connect to me, this is what he meant, the way we do it? He meant to do it with it. To circumcise your heart, when God says. To circumcise your heart means only godliness. That's not the way we both put on feeling. So that's the first problem. And, and then the other commandments, we can't do it all. Vegama mitzvot shemekaimam, and also the commandments that we do keep, we know that each and every one of us, we don't do any of the commandments properly. We're going, when are we going to do the commandments properly? When Mashiach comes. Until then, you know, between you and you, you have a even inclination when you put on feeling, you're thinking about other things. And so he says, a person, shouldn't give up, God forbid. And he shouldn't say, since I can't do it perfect, I'm not going to do it at all. No. You can't do it perfect, it's true. But that doesn't mean you can tell God, I'm not doing it now. No, you're not allowed to. But on the other hand, you're not allowed to say, that when God is going to build the temple, then we're going to do the commandments the right way. So this is enough for that time. It says, I don't have to do the commandments now because, God, because it's not the real thing. It's only a simulator. You know what? I'll be religious. You know when? When Mashiach comes. Yeah? That you're also not allowed to say. 
but also now, כאשר נמצאים בדרך, we are on the way, just like the Jews in Egypt, when they left 40 years in the desert, מוכרח להיות בידינו קיום המצוות. We have to continue to do the commandments. שעל ידי זה נוכל לסבור ולעבור את עיתול הדרך עם האבני נגף ומכשולים. It is one more thing. Without the commandments, we would never be able to achieve to get to the time of Mashiach. It has two things. To survive and to get there. In other words, if God, if we wouldn't have continued to keep the commandments, we wouldn't have the power to bring Mashiach. So it's the commandments that gives us the power to ultimately fulfill God's... So it's true. It's not as good when Mashiach comes, but without them, we will never be able to get to that time. So therefore, they're important also for you individually, as a person himself. אמנם אף על פי שהמצוות שבזמן הגלות אינם אלא מבחינת ציונים, even though the commandments are only signpost, מכל מקום יש בהם מעלה מיוחדת, they have an important attribute, שדווקא על ידם נעשית ההכנה להשלימות לקיום המצוות לעתיד לבוא. That the commandment that we do today, they are the ones that are going to bring to the real commandments, without us. Doing the commandment today, there are, even though they're tzionim, we will never get to the next stage. ועל דרך זה, שמצינו בנוגע לעבודת האבות, ביחס למתן תורה, and we find it similarly with the service of the forefather, that they perform the entire, the entire Torah before matan Torah. שאף על פי שהעיקר הוא קיום המצוות של אחרי מתן תורה, it says why, it doesn't count. The Torah wasn't given there. Why did they do it? Because it gave the power for us to do it. We are going to be the forefathers for the time of Mashiach. We are. Just like they're the, they are the, gave a signpost to the time of Matan Torah, we are going to be the signpost for ourselves for after Mashiach comes. מכל מקום, דווקא די מעשה אבות, נסחת מתן תורה. וכמו כן, לאחרי מתן תורה גופה, and this is just like after Matan Torah, שאף שעיקר העניין של קיום המצוות יהיה בכניסה לארץ, that even though the real commandments are going to be after Mashiach is going to come, מכל מקום, nevertheless, ההכנה לזה הייתה במדבר דווקא. The preparation is by us being in exile right now in the desert. Right now we are the generation of the desert that's coming into the land.